You might be starting out in your action sports photography career and wondering, what are the best lenses to buy? In this video, I'm gonna be sharing what I believe to be the best lens options for shooting action sports. So first to get clarity, we need to ask, what are the things in a camera lens that we need in order to service best? The top things that I'm looking for are speed of the lens, its capabilities, its weight, its compactness, and price. Let's break these down individually and apply them to both primes and zooms. Firstly, let's look at the speed of the lens. So most commonly you're gonna find that high quality prime lenses have a lower aperture than zoom lenses. The difference between the two isn't massive though. For example, the Canon L series 50 millimeter prime lens has an f-stop of 1.2, where a Canon L series RF 24 to 70 millimeter has an f-stop of 2.8. The difference between the 1.2 and the 2.8 isn't a huge difference in my opinion, where as you'd see it maybe in like a lens with an f4 versus like a 2.8. Obviously the prime lens is gonna have a slight advantage over the zoom lens with a 1.2 aperture in low light conditions, but like I said, it's not a massive difference. If you can afford to purchase a lens with an f-stop of 2.8 or lower, like I said, it's gonna serve you better in those low light conditions, allowing more light into your lens, producing sharper images in those low light scenarios. No matter what sport you're shooting, you're always gonna get put into those situations where lighting is less than ideal, and it's always best to have the equipment that's gonna keep you out there longer, producing better images with less noise. The second point we're talking about a lens is capabilities. This is one of the main factors that I'm focusing on when I'm looking for a lens. I'm gonna be looking to choose something that will best fit the pace of my shoots, my workflow, and the most common environments that I'm in. With being in those high paced environments where things are constantly moving, I love being able to close the distance between my subject and myself by just that quick movement of the zoom ring. In my opinion, I believe that the biggest downside of prime lenses is being tied to a physical location. And if you wanna get closer to your subjects or further away, you have to physically go to those spots. I know some people might be thinking, well, you have to move locations to change up the look of your shots anyways, so what's the big deal? And yes, you're right, but let me give you a scenario. So let's say that you're using a 24 to 70 millimeter and you're zoomed in nice and tight on your subject but then you think okay well I want a nice establishing shot to show my environment so you quick zoom out to your 24 millimeter now you have that shot so much capability so much depth that you can capture just by moving that zoom ring unless you're incredibly prepared you know the exact shots that you want the prime lenses just won't serve you with that flexibility. Now, one thing to note is with the zoom lens, you have a greater risk of damaging that zoom function from the particles within your environment. This summer, I was out shooting a lot of dirt bikes and because it was such a dry summer, I had so much dust in the air and that was getting into my zoom function. And long story short, I wasn't cleaning my gear the way that I should have after every single shoot. And so the dust jammed up my lens where I couldn't even zoom the lens. And so I had to send it in to get it fixed. What did you say to that, Jake? Trick. Screw this all. <laughs> I don't really know if this is just an RF thing because I shot in way harsher environments with my EF glass without even cleaning it and I never had any issues and I was doing that for like three years. But that's just something to keep in mind when choosing a zoom lens. It's always just best practices to clean your gear after every single shoot. The third thing is weight and compactness. And I'm gonna tie these two things together because I think that they go hand in hand. I would say that between the primes and the zooms, they're pretty comparable in weight up to about like 24 to 70 millimeters. But there is one thing that you should consider. If you're going out on a shoot and you wanna capture the most action possible, you're likely gonna want a wide lens, a medium lens and a long lens. Think about how much weight you'd be carrying on your back. Realistically, at the end of a day shoot, your back would be dead. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, my back. That's why the two lens pair of the 24 to 70 millimeter and the 7200 is such a dynamic pair is because you have such a large range of focal lengths without having to worry that you're gonna break your back. I mean, and this pair got even lighter with the upgrade of the 70 to 200 millimeter RF version. Like this thing, it weighs enough. And think about like cutting that in like a third. That's that's a lot of weight saving. It's almost half the size. And sometimes just to save weight, I'll go into the backcountry with the 24 to 70 millimeter lens. And I feel completely comfortable because I still feel like it provides me a lot of options. The fourth thing that I'm thinking about when buying a lens is the price. And I know that this is one of the biggest things on everybody's mind. So I'm in the Canon ecosystem. And when comparing the focal ranges of the RF class, I noticed that the zoom lenses and the prime lenses are pretty comparable in price. For a Canon L series RF 50 millimeter lens, it's about $3,000. And that's about the same for a 24 to 70 millimeter RF version. But but I'd say that if you wanted a solid prime lens set, you'd be looking for around three lenses. That would be $9,000 in lenses just to start off if you wanted the best from Canon. Now, if you bought two zoom lenses, yes, you'd still be spending a lot of money up front, but you'd be future-proofing yourself for years to come. By having such a large focal range, you'll be able to capture the majority of what you're asked to shoot, 
And if there's something more specialty, you can just go and rent that lens. By not continuously having to put money into gear, you're gonna be able to put money back into your business, allowing you to be able to go that much further in your business. In my opinion, when looking at all of these factors, I believe that the best option for action sports photography is a zoom lens. You might be shooting different sports than what I'm shooting, but just take these rules and try to apply them when you're looking for a lens. If you're looking to dive deeper into what makes an impactful action sports photo, you'll like this video where I share my best kept secrets on action sports photography. I'll see you over there. Peace. I, I really think you'll like this video. Where if you click on it, I think, I think you'll find it valuable. Maybe, maybe not, maybe, maybe not.